All righty, welcome everyone to the Virtual College Exploration Program in partnership with Colleges That Change Lives. Uh, this is the Eckerd College information session. Before I pass it over to the Eckerd team, I'm gonna kick us off with some housekeeping items. Um, first and foremost, we do have more Colleges That Changes Lives sessions through Tuesday evening. So if you're interested in connecting with other colleges and universities, please just check back on our schedule to register for those sessions. And when you do register, you do get a barcode in that confirmation email, but know that that barcode is not necessary for any of the virtual events you participate in. We do record all of these sessions and post them to our website shortly after the session concludes. So whether you wanna rewatch a session you participated live in or watch one you may have missed, um, just check back on, the, on our website and those sessions will be posted momentarily. And then finally, you'll see the Eckerd team, you'll hear them. Unfortunately, they cannot see or hear you all. This is webinar style format. So any questions you have throughout the presentation, feel free to type those into the Q&A box and the presenters will do their best to address those throughout the session. So I will pass it over to Jake to get us started. Thanks so much. Awesome, thanks so much, Jen. And thanks for everyone joining us. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. We can kick it off. Um, my name is Jake Brown, and I am the Director of Admission here at Eckerd College. Um, I'm going to have my fellow panelists introduce themselves as well. Alex, why don't you go ahead first? My name's Alex Zelensky. I'm an Assistant Director for Admissions here at Eckerd. Dean Sanfilippo. Oh, you're on mute. It has to happen at least once. I know, and it's, of course, it you know it's going to happen if I'm in here. So my name is Margie Sanfilippo, and I'm the Associate Dean of Faculty at Eckerd College and the Executive Director of our Center for Academic Excellence. And Grayson. And my name is Grayson. I'm a rising junior on campus. Um, a few things I do, I'm an RA, member of the Academic Honor Council, and I also work in admissions. Great. Once again, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, today we're going to talk about a number of uh, items, certainly about the application process, <clears throat> but also about what makes Eckerd very, very different from other colleges and universities, and even different from other small liberal arts and science colleges, um, and different from the other 40 colleges that change lives. First and foremost, we're going to talk about our autumn term, which is part of our 414 academic calendar. We're gonna talk about academic opportunities, including research and um, Eckerd being undergraduate only. We're gonna talk about our location in St. Petersburg, Florida, right on the Gulf of Mexico. Um, study abroad opportunities, campus life, including a mile and a half of campus being right on Boca Ciega Bay, outcomes, and what some of our grads are doing, and then finally, certainly we'll talk about the application process. But let's first start talking about autumn term. In order to understand um, autumn term and the way our students um, join us, I think it's important to understand that Eckerd students typically are pretty adventurous. On average, students are traveling at least 1,000 miles from home to join us on campus. That's very, very different than most colleges and universities where on average, students are traveling 200 to 250 miles from home to go to a college campus. In terms of student body, 47, student, uh, 47 states are represented um, as well as 41 different countries and about 90% of our students live here on campus. So we're very, very residential. As I mentioned, just a few moments ago, Eckerd has a 414 academic calendar. And this relates to the number of courses students take in an academic year. So in the fall semester, students would typically take four courses. Then during January, they have a winter term where a student will take one course in sort of a mini semester, and then four courses again. So that's 414. <clears throat> Eckerd was one of the first colleges to develop a 414 academic calendar. Certainly we're not the only one, um, but it is different than a semester, trimester, or quarter system. The difference, however, and this is what makes Eckerd really, really different, is the fact that in your first year, it's not so much 414, fall, winter term, spring, it's more like 144. And so our students, <clears throat> new students, come in three weeks before our upper class students for what we call autumn term. And so autumn term is that opportunity for students to spend three whole weeks on campus with each other, taking a course, but also orienting themselves to campus as well as to college life. So most colleges and universities will have a two day or three day orientation. Here at Eckerd, 
we spend three long weeks, long for some, um, with our new students. We kick off autumn term with this ceremony of lights. And so this is our way of bringing everyone into the academic um, uh, community and certainly Eckerd community um, on campus. Obviously, these people are not social distancing. <laughs> so this is before COVID. Um, we certainly will have a restructured ceremony of lights this year, but we hope to bring back that tradition the way it's always been um, very, very soon. This is a typical autumn term schedule. And so you'll see every day for those three weeks, you're going to have a class. The class itself is not major specific. And so you're going to have an opportunity to list out of 25 or so different courses, six that interest you. This is your opportunity to read through course descriptions and really try to figure out what sounds neat, what sounds interesting. Instead of us saying, okay, what do you want to major in? Therefore, this is the course you're going to be. Um, we're going to instead ask you just, what sounds like an interesting topic? Maybe it's anthropology. Most of you, probably all of you, have not yet taken an anthropology course in high school. So how do you know you don't like it? And I imagine many of you are undecided or thinking of a few different majors. And so once again, this is an opportunity for you to explore um, as part of that liberal arts and science tradition. So you're gonna have class every day, then certainly we'll give you time to go to lunch. In the afternoon during autumn term, you'll have community building events. So you'll be working with um, other offices on campus. You'll be really learning what it means to be a member of our community, how to stay healthy and safe while in college. Um, and then obviously every evening, you're gonna have homework, and go back to class for the next day. As I mentioned, um, the courses are not major specific. So here are some of the courses that we've taught in the past. These are topics that um, typically aren't found in a course catalog, right? They're not intro to psych. They're not calc courses. These are really looking at a particular perspective or question or issue. Um, and so you get to really dive deeply into a course for those three weeks. Something like narratives of sale or anthropology of eating or the future of the European Union, Florida's fragile environment. Those are just some of the courses. As I mentioned, we also have co-curricular programs. So things that you'll be doing while also going to, to class. This is during autumn term. Some of them are fun. Some of them are very informative and educational. Um, some of them are fun and educational. So things like Contiki Raft Race, Healthy Expectations, uh, the Shiver Me Timbers Luncheon, or Your Place on the Eckerd Family Tree, are some of the different programs that you're going to experience alongside your course during autumn term. Alex, any questions yet about autumn term? Nope, we're good. So I'm gonna go right over to academics. Um, I imagine most of you understand as being a participant of a Colleges That Change Lives program, understand the liberal arts and sciences. But I think it's, it's never, um, it never hurts to really go through briefly what liberal arts and science means. Yes, liberal arts include science. Yes, liberal arts include STEM. But what we are doing as a liberal arts and science institution is not just giving you an understanding of one particular field, the depth, right? We're also making sure that you get those soft skills. You're able to communicate um, effectively, both written and orally. You're able to look between disciplines, work in teams, work creatively. And so these are the types of skills that employers are looking for, right? And in fact, this um, statistic by the Association of American Colleges and Universities points out that 93% of the employers agree that among job candidates, um, they're really looking for people who can think critically, communicate effectively, solve complex problems, much more so than knowing how to do the job, right? When I always say, when I was in college, no one talked about social media managers or web app developers. And before March, no one was talking about contact tracers, right? But now we have graduates who are going into that field and really working on um, problems that we never even thought 
many of you watching today will be doing jobs that haven't yet been created. And that's the point of a liberal arts and science education is to make sure that no matter what you do, you are well prepared. As I mentioned, during autumn term, you're going to be in a course. That course is going to be the same 20 or so students. And that course is going to talk, be taught by a faculty member. The faculty member who teaches that course will be also your faculty mentor. And so Eckerd does not have advisors. We don't have necessarily an advising office, but you will always, as an Eckerd student, have a faculty mentor. The faculty mentor in autumn term is someone who sees you every single day, who's working with those same 20 students, and it's someone who you're developing a really strong relationship with. At the end of those three weeks, the mentor doesn't go away. And so you're staying with that same cohort in our foundation course called Human Experience, where the same 20 students and that faculty mentor will be together and will be taking a course, not every day, but a few times a week throughout the fall and the spring semesters. All of our students come in technically undecided. So you don't apply to Eckerd for a particular major, you're just applying to the college in general. Typically in the spring though, you will then work with your mentor to start to determine if you want to declare a major, and if so, what that major will be. Once you declare your discipline, once you declare your major, you will then have a mentor within that field of study. So this mentor is someone who will work with you um, in research, in helping you um, select appropriate courses, maybe trying to work with you to see how you can fit studying abroad into your four-year plan. And this mentor has also mentored other current and past students within that discipline. So that mentor can also connect you with a larger network of alumni within that particular discipline, within that particular field of study. As I mentioned, areas of study, here are, is our list. We've got about 42 majors and a number of minors as well. So any programs with an asterisk, with a star after it, is a minor only. Some of our top majors include marine science. That's certainly our flagship program. That's what we're very well known for. But also environmental studies, psychology, international relations and global affairs. And one of our newest majors, which has already become one of our most popular majors, is animal studies. And so this is an opportunity to work with cognitive development or animal behavior. Um, it's also interdisciplinary. You'll see that we have some other majors that have like three plus three or three two or two two. These are connected with other institutions. So our three two engineering would include um, three years here at Eckerd and then two years at either Washington University in St. Louis or Columbia University. You end up after five years with two degrees and a degree from Eckerd as well as an engineering degree from one of those two institutions. We also have a three three law program with Florida State University in Tallahassee where instead of seven years, typically um, it would take to get both a bachelor's and a JD, it would take six years. So three years at Eckerd and then three years at FSU. And then once again, one of our newest programs is our two plus two program in theater and musical theater where students can earn a bachelor of fine arts by spending two years at Eckerd and then two years at Circle in the Square um, Theater School in Manhattan, right there in Times Square. So those are some of our articulated programs as well. Many of um, you might be thinking Eckerd is only a science institution, right? We do marine science, that must be the only thing we do. But this is just a quick snapshot of what our students are studying. Um, in fact, almost 40% of our students are studying the social sciences. So that includes things like psychology, international relations, political science. About a third of our students are doing the natural sciences, so marine science, bio, chemistry, 10% each in arts and communication, as well as business and management, and then 8% in the humanities. As I mentioned, all of our students come in undecided, and this wheel I'm going to let the PhD talk about because it just baffles me. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, 
I really do like this wheel, Jake. And you know, one day, one day I'm going to sit down and explain it to you. Okay. I so, so look at this. Well, we do ask our students what they are interested in majoring in before they come in. And what you will see is the outer wheel of that. And, and you will see that about a third of our students are undecided. Um, the, uh, and as you'll notice where they end up gravitating to or where they end up majoring in is where the arrows are. And another thing to keep in mind here, so every, everybody who's undecided eventually finds their passion. And another thing to look at here is that some people come in thinking that they know what their passion is, majoring, for example, in biology, and then saying, uh, maybe not. I think I might want to come over here and do marine science again or leap right across here and do history. So um, we are here uh, at Eckerd. Your mentor will help you figure out what it is that you want to major in, but don't feel like you need to know that when you get to Eckerd. Next slide. Do I have them? I don't have them, right? So um, I wanted to tell you about some of the ways that you can get involved doing uh, research and other activities at Eckerd College with the faculty. One of the best things about being an undergraduate only institution is that there are no pesky graduate students between you and the faculty member and the lab. That's how it works at large universities. The graduate students are the ones who teach the undergraduates and they're the ones who get to work in the labs with the faculty. Um, who are writing grants that get them out of having to teach. Uh, faculty who come to Eckerd College want to teach, they want to teach undergraduates, and they want to work with them side by side in the lab, giving them skills that will make them far more marketable um, and better and better prepared for graduate school than many of their peers who went to large state universities. Next slide. Um, here's another example of research. Our research doesn't have to take place in a lab. Uh, it can take place in the field. Uh, on your right there is Lauren Highfield. She is a uh, professor of psychology and animal studies. Uh, next to her is Sarah Nadler, who was a student and also teaches for us some now, and that is Conrad, her therapy dog. So um, in this setting, um, Sarah and Lauren are seeing whether or not Conrad can distinguish between those two shapes. Um, my own dog, um, rest her, may, may she rest in peace, couldn't do this task at all. So I'm hoping that maybe my new dog. Dog. New dogs. You've got new two. Dogs. Two. Two. Anyway, next slide. Um, yeah, lots of things happen outside and more things are going to happen outside in the time of COVID. That's for sure. Uh, we have outdoor classroom spaces all back to all over our campus. But it, I love this picture because it shows how our faculty really do interact not only in the classroom with their students, but outside of the classroom as well. Um, often talking about the books that they're reading or politics or current events um, and just really getting to know their, their students well. Um, this is Art Skinner. Uh, he is an art professor. I swear he must have planned that. Um, and, and here he is working in our new um, Center for Visual Arts. Uh, we have two beautiful new buildings on campus. Well, I guess the science building's not so new anymore. The James Center for Molecular and Life Sciences, and then we have the Visual Arts Building, balancing out both the liberal arts and sciences. And the students can get hand, um, can get real close work with, with the faculty there. Uh, I actually took a drawing class with Art Skinner this past spring, and uh, it was fun. What else do we have? Um, so what does this, I said this sets you up well, all these opportunities to work with the faculty directly. Um, and you can also work with the staff in the Center for Academic Excellence, in particular, Kat Robinson, if you're interested in um, scholarships or fellowships after you get here to Eckerd. So your opportunities to earn funding for your education don't end when you start at Eckerd. It's just the beginning. And Kat Robinson works with some of our brightest students to help them to win Rhodes, Fulbrights, um, uh, Goldwater scholarships to study in the United States and all over the world. We are particularly proud that we hold the record in the nation for the number of Holland scholarships that are um, given out every year to students in, in the marine sciences and environmental studies and other areas. And these students get a $9,500 scholarship both their junior and senior year to help support their um, 
their education and they also have a program. They also go to NOAA, which is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association. I always get the last letter wrong. Administration. Um, they do a summer research program with them that is also paid for. So great opportunity there. We also have a Peace Corps prep program. You can learn about that in our center as well. And this is a program that helps students to better prepare themselves for life in the Peace Corps. It doesn't guarantee that you'll get in it, uh, but it certainly gives you a much better leg up as they help you identify your work sector and your language and your country that you want to go to. Um, gosh, we're going to have to update this. We have a new president. This, this is our former, pre former yeah, president, that's right. <laughs> John Eastman. I, uh, I mean, he just, we just got a new president, so um, time to update the slides. Um, we also are very proud to have what's uh, called Phi Beta Kappa. We have a chapter of Phi Beta Kappa at Eckerd College. It is the nation's oldest and most prestigious academic honor society for the liberal arts and sciences. Um, it was founded in, uh, it was founded 200 years ago at the College of William and Mary, and fewer than, um, fewer than 10% of colleges and universities even have a chapter of Phi Beta Kappa because it really is difficult to prove to them that you have the quality education that would allow us to bestow this honor on the students who graduate. Um, fewer than 10% of students are inducted into Phi Beta Kappa every year, so it, you're looking at the top 1% of students nationwide. And it really is very much the proverbial feather in your graduation cap if you could be inducted into Phi Beta Kappa. So look for that no matter what school you go to. And I think you so that might be in mind. That is you, that's your section, you're good. We did have a question and I'm wondering if um, you might be able to answer this. I think the answer is yes, but are transfer students or second degree students eligible to apply for the NOAA Holling Scholarship? Yes. Yes, yes okay. they are, yeah. Perfect, great. Um, that was just a question that came in and I thought the answer was yes, but wanted to make sure. I'm now going to turn it over to Alex to talk a little bit more about our location in St. Petersburg. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about St. Petersburg as well as studying beyond Eckerd's campus before we give it to Grayson to talk about Eckerd's campus itself. But St. Petersburg, for those not familiar with it, is a peninsula on a peninsula. So we're situated about 25 minutes from Tampa. That's where many students will fly in and out of. Um, we're about an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes from Orlando. I do that drive plenty of times to go to Disney. And we're about four, uh, four hours from Miami itself. Um, but St. Petersburg, it's quite a cool city. When I try to explain it to families on the road, I kind of describe it as like this modge podge melting pot of everything because there's always something happening. Um, I tell families all the time, if you're bored either at Eckerd or in St. Petersburg, it's frankly your own fault because there's many things to do. Um, of course, we have tons of great beaches in the area. Um, we have award-winning beaches. This is, I believe, St. Pete Beach or um, yeah, St. Beach, great. Um, this is also two students out there using just one of our white bikes. I'm not sure how both of them got there. Um, but nonetheless, students definitely take advantage of not only the beaches on our campus, but in their surrounding, surrounding uh, Tampa Bay region as well. Um, within St. Petersburg and the whole Tampa Bay, there's lots of great um, activities and venues around. So beyond like music venues, we have a ton of sports as well. So this is the Tampa Bay Rowdies, which is soccer. We're also home to the Tampa Bay Rays, baseball, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, football, and Tampa Bay Lightning's hockey. So kind of got all your sports there. So if you're missing one sport from your home state, likely we have it in the Tampa Bay region as well. Um, one of my favorite things to do in St. Pete is actually go to the Saturday morning market. It's one of the largest outdoor farmer's markets in the Southeast. Um, happens every Saturday. Um, and farmer's markets in St. Pete are very different than other parts of the country because we do them in the fall. Um, it's just too hot for the summer. Um, we also have a number of student um, clubs and organizations work with the Saturday markets as well. So we have our acapella group perform here um, occasionally throughout the semester as well. So great place just to um, walk around and wander. We have a lot of great like other festivals too. So we have an art festival. We have um, so Saturday or not Saturday market. We have first Friday. So every first Friday of the month, it's pretty much like a huge block party. Um, so it's I mean music, food, just lively entertainment all throughout, uh, throughout downtown St. Pete. And this is a very small section of um, downtown St. Petersburg as well. Um, next slide, Jake. 
So that's a very, very quick overview of St. Petersburg, but let's talk about studying beyond the Tampa Bay region. So study abroad is a very big deal here at Eckerd. We've about 70% of our students studying abroad at least once during their time at Eckerd. Um, but a lot will go multiple times too. So it's not uncommon to go multiple times. I did it four times when I was a student, so I took full advantage of it. But I think the great thing about Eckerd is we do offer a variety of ways to go abroad. So there's four main ways. We have that traditional semester experience. We have our own study center in London, but we also partner with over 300 universities and programs around the world. So you could really go anywhere you'd like. Um, the second way to go abroad is during winter term. So this is one of our winter term courses, either to the Galapagos or Cuba. I'm not sure which one since it's underwater. Um, but we usually have about 30, 35 courses that go abroad each winter term across a variety of majors. And this is great for students who don't want to leave Eckerd for that long, like which was my case. Um, and it's a great way just to knock out a class right away. So if you have a really keen interest in doing a language immersion trip, do it during winter term because that's some of the best ways to learn a language. Um, another way students can study abroad is through what we call spring into summer. So you're taking a course on campus during the spring semester and then traveling to that country of interest um, the three to four weeks following the spring term letting out. And lastly, the final way to study abroad is through one of our alternative spring break trips. So we have about 10 trips that go abroad each spring break to do service, usually in Central, South, and North America. Um, and those are typically service focused. Um, that just kind of plays into the campus's attitude of just doing good in the world. Um, our goal in the coming few years is to have as close to 100% as possible studying abroad. So not making a requirement but, requirement, but really strongly encouraging it. Obviously in a COVID area, we're not studying abroad right now, but we're gonna um, get back to it as soon as we're able to. Um, so it's a very quick overview of study abroad. I'm going to pass it over to Grayson to talk about campus life since he is the current student after all. Thank you, Alex. Well, as Jake mentioned earlier, about 90% of our students do live on campus. So we do have a very active campus life. Um, one of the things that is a big draw to Eckerd is we do have South Beach, a um, great place to come watch sunset every night, as well as a lot of people will know if you look us up. We're ranked the number one pet friendly campus by um, Lind EDU or College Raptor on Google. So if you look us up, we're super pet friendly. As you can see, the dog on campus on South Beach. Do you want to go to the next slide, Jake? And then this is our Eckerd College waterfront. I argue that this is probably the most unique thing on our campus. Um, it is educational as well as recreational. So educational, we take trips out into the Tampa Bay. We learn. We do our research on kayaks. We take out the boats in the marine science discipline and do our labs on the Tampa Bay. Um, we travel around the state of Florida and do educational trips, as well as it's a great place to come hang out with your friends, take a kayak out, take a paddleboard out, de-stress from the week. Um, so a really unique experience on our campus. Next slide. And then another thing that runs through the waterfront um, is called XR. It stands for Eckerd College Search and Rescue. Um, they're the only collegiate maritime search and rescue team in the country. They respond to about 600 distress calls a year in the Tampa Bay region, whether that be somebody needing gas or somebody is drowning. They respond to it all. Um, they are fully trained, just like the Coast Guard would respond to calls, and it's all volunteer-based. And then we also have a land version of that called ECERT, which stands for Agri-College Emergency Response Team. Um, they are all fully trained EMTs who respond to anything from you need a Band-Aid on campus to somebody's having a heart attack. They're fully trained to respond to all of those different things and keeping our campus 100% safe. Do you want to go to the next slide? And then residential life. Um, so as you can see in this picture, all the circled buildings are our dorm complexes. Normally as an underclass student, you're going to live in either a traditional complex or a hotel style complex. The hotel, com hotel style complexes are on the far right of this picture. And then the traditionals are kind of intertwined um, with all the other circles. Then as an upperclassman student, we do have two apartment style dorms. Um, and then we also have one suite style dorm when you get to upperclassman housing. And then getting involved. Um, clubs on campus are probably the coolest thing because they are funded by students as well as all student run. So we have roughly 100 clubs each semester on campus. Um, they are funded through our student government called ECOS. So when you submit your student activity fee, that actually goes directly to the students. Um, we get that money as ECOS student government and we put that back out into clubs, into different activities on campus. Um, and all you need to do to make a club is have you 
to other students and a faculty mentor if we don't already have something you want to be involved in? Um, hey, Grayson, we had a question come in about diversity. So I was wondering if you could quickly, um, there's some of our affinity clubs and organizations that deal with or are structured around diversity, equity, and inclusion, but could you briefly um, discuss our diversity initiatives? Yeah, absolutely. So with everything going on in the world today, um, we have all students going through a new diversity and inclusion training. Every student will take that before they get back to campus, as well as a few camp, uh, clubs on campus. We have EC Afro American Society. They've been hosting different Zoom calls for the student body throughout the summer um, to make sure we're actively discussing as a student body what's going on. We want to learn, we want to educate ourselves, and we want to make sure that we continue to put our best foot forward to make our campus as diverse and inclusive as possible. So we can have continued those conversations over the summer. We continue them during the school year. Um, I would say the best thing about the student body at Eckerd is we are very open to communication. Um, so we openly talk about things and we're super active in the community. Next slide. And then sports. So we have, we are division two. We're located in the Sunshine State Conference. Um, the only division one sports on campus are beach volleyball and sailing. Um, and some recent achievements, um, our women ba women's basketball team recently won their conference this past winter. So 2020 season, they won. And then our men's baseball team won the 2019 Sunshine State Conference as well. Thanks so much, Grayson. I will take it from here. So you've heard a lot about our campus beach waterfront um, being right there on, on the water, being pet friendly, and sometimes, uh, people can start to think, well, this sounds more like a vacation or paradise than a college. Both can be true. And so obviously um, we're part of this presentation today because we are part of Colleges That Change Lives. And Lauren Pope, um, who wrote the first three editions of Colleges That Change Lives, really understood Eckerd. And he understood that um, for students who might be looking for a vacation, um, this is not the place. Our students really understand what it means to be um, academically strong, to be motivated, to work really, really hard, but also to really love where they live. And I think that is one of the beauties of the Eckerd experience, is that um, you can work hard, and then you can also you know, play hard and really just enjoy your surroundings. Um, in fact, and I'll give you some of the statistics here, 95% of our students who come to Eckerd and continuously take courses, right, don't take a leave of absence, but 95% of our students will earn their degree in four years. 77% of our students, based on a recent survey, are employed full-time, and 50% within five years will, will go on um, for an advanced degree, will go on for a master's or a doctorate or, or a JD or, or a medical degree. And here are some of our alums. So we've got Michael Specht, who works for Apple as a, a senior camera image quality engineer, or Joe Con Conrad, who was a marine science and history major, who now works with the Smithsonian in digitizing all of their collections. We also have La Ruby May, who uh, works in DC. Um, she's a former DC council member, and she's a managing member of her own firm. And Brady O'Donnell, I feel like I'm doing a lot of DC people today. I must um, be thinking about the government, but he works for the Marine Mammal Commission. I'm going to hand this over to Alex again. We've got about, looks like 10 minutes, so we'll have some time for uh, questions as well. But Alex, if you can talk a little bit about the application process. Yeah, of course. So there are two different ways you can apply to Eckerd. Um, there is what we call um, early action and enrolled admission. Early action at Eckerd means if you apply by November 15th, you'll hear back by December 15th at the latest, so a one month turnaround. This is non-binding, so you still have till May 1st to make your final decision. Um, the other way is just raw admissions. That means once we have your materials, it takes about four to five weeks to, or three to four weeks to review once we have it complete. There are two different applications we accept. We have our own application, but we also accept the Common App as well. Um, for the rest of the application materials, we do need, of course, your official high school transcript. Um, just so everyone is aware, our average GPA is about a 3.45 on a 4.0 scale, unweighted. We'll, we will give some weight for any AP, IB, or ACE courses that you have taken during high school. 
Um, we are test optional for these coming years. Um, so feel, don't feel the need to submit test scores to us. But if you do submit test scores, all right, middle 50% for the SAT is about a 1080 to a 1280. And the middle 50% for the ACT is about a 23 to a 29. Um, but like I said, we are test optional, so we do not require them. Um, we do need at least one letter recommendation from an academic source, so guidance counselor, teacher, anyone like that. You can, of course, submit more than that, though. And lastly is the essay. Um, that's just included in the Common App, so pretty straightforward there. We do have an application fee, but we will waive that up until December 1st. Um, when you apply to Eckerd, you are considered for our merit scholarships. So these range anywhere from, oh, do you want to go to the next slide, Jake? Um, these range anywhere from 12 to 20. I'm sorry. 20, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was muting and I'm muting. Alex, can you also mention that test optional um, can still be uh, eligible for merit scholarships? Yes. Yep. So, like I said, you are considered merit scholarships when you apply, regardless of test scores or not. Our um, scholarships range anywhere from eight to twenty-five thousand. That's including with transfer scholarship in there. Um, and these scholarships are renewable for all four years, as long as you maintain a two GPA at Eckerd. Um, to see where you may fall into that spectrum, we do have a chart on our website um, for general academic and test score GPA or charts, etc. Um, there are a few other scholarships we'd like to talk about. One is called the first year research associateship. So this is exactly what it sounds like. It's a research opportunity you can do during your first year. Topics always vary. Some are like marine science, environmental studies, psych, business, the humanities, etc. If you do apply for that and receive it, you'll get $1,000 just for your first year, but then you'll work with a professor over the entire year, get credit for that research, present at a symposium in the spring, and then potentially have your work published by the time you graduate. Um, the other one is called the Artistic Achievement Award. So if you have any involved within creative writing, visual arts, music, theater, or film, you can submit some of your work to us and we would pass it off to the faculty to pick the winners. If you are selected to receive that, you'll get $1,000 every single year, as long as you remain involved in the arts while at Akron. Um, there are a number of other scholarships on our website. Most of those also have due dates in February, but we also provide links to outside sources because we do accept all outside sources and this will not negatively impact your financial aid. Um, when it comes to financial aid, um, we always encourage families to submit the FAFSA to us um, by the of October 1st. And then here's a general breakdown. So on average, 96% of students do receive financial aid coming to Eckerd and our average aid award is about $36,000 um, per year. And total comprehensive fees is about $61,000 per year. At any point during the fall, when you're going over this, feel free to reach out to us, either as admissions counselors or financial aid office to discuss what your financial aid package means. For those of you that are from Florida that are in the webinar today, we do have some Florida aid. So we do accept Florida Bright Futures. Um, we do have two Florida grants that you receive for being just a Florida high schooler attending Eckerd itself. Um, and we do also accept Florida prepaid if your family does have that. Like I said though, reach out to your counselor if you want to know more information about that. Um, but obviously, as you're going through the college search process or even in the application process, here's some other ways to engage with us. So obviously, during these unprecedented times, um, it's sometimes difficult to visit campus. But we want to provide the best ways to give you that accurate experience without necessarily having to come here. So one is connecting with a counselor. So that means if you want to have like a Zoom call um, with us as admissions counselors, we're more than happy to set that up. Um, or you can talk with students like Grayson or some of our other tour guides who can give you a student perspective of that as well. They can also do a guided virtual tour so you can see campus um, from their viewpoint. Uh, we do have some open houses coming up, so be on the lookout for more information about that shortly. And then finally, we do have some limited tours on campus. Um, we ask that you register in advance because we cannot take any um, walk-ins, uh, but we do offer some limited tours on campus as well. Thanks so much, Alex. And we've got time. Wow. Must be Grayson um, helping us out. Uh, at least the three of us never have enough time for questions, but we've got about four and a half minutes. So thanks, Grayson. Make sure I stayed on track. So we do have some questions. Um, one question is, do you offer any digital art courses? Dean Sanfilippo, do you know um, if we have digital art courses in our brand new Center for Visual Arts? Sorry. We do. We do. We even have digital art tutors to help with those classes. So yes, the answer is yes. Great. Thanks so much. Someone else wanted to know about 
um, how uh, students taking a gap year will affect admission. Certainly we do have a number of students who are deferring for a semester or a year. I don't necessarily believe that it will make admission any harder for 2021, but we do encourage students to apply. You don't have to apply right now, right? But try to apply by early action, November 15th. You know, take time to really work on your application. Don't rush it. Um, spend some time really finding colleges that are a good fit for you. Um, but someone else also asked about percentage of early action students. The vast majority, I don't even know if I have a percentage off the top of my head, but the vast majority of our students are applying for early action. And therefore, most of our dis decisions, our admission decisions, are out um, in the hands of folks by around December 15th. The beauty of that is with um, the FAFSA also being available October 1st, you can have an admission decision that, yes, also includes scholarship and a financial aid package from Eckerd all before um, your winter break. And so then you can really start to assess, is Eckerd a good fit in many, many ways, including financially, and perhaps scheduling some time to come join us in Florida, you know, January, February, and March, it's not a bad time to come and see us. Um, looking at some other questions, are self-reported test scores sufficient for an application to be completed? Yes, however, we just need a copy of your score report. So you don't need to send us test scores from the testing agency. You don't have to spend any more money to the SAT, um, College Board, or ACT, but just send us like a screenshot of your own test scores that were provided to you. As long as your name is on the top of it, then that's perfectly fine. That's what we um, count as self-reported. Other questions that you saw coming through, Alex, that I may have missed? Oh, here's one. Can you have a car on campus? Grayson, maybe you can mention a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. You can bring a car on campus on um, your first year. It's about $110 to park it for the year, but I'd say roughly like 20% of first years bring cars on campus, and then it kind of increases as students get off-campus internships and other things like that. Thanks so much. Someone told us that we are awesome, so I just want to shout out to that person and thank you. <laughs> it's not always easy talking to a crowd of people you can't see. Um, someone else, uh, Dean Sanfilippo, also asked if you could describe a little bit more um, in about the last 30 seconds we have about the Peace Corps prep program. Sure, the Peace Corps prep program helps, um, you're with a cohort of students who identify, and you work to identify your work sector, to get your resume together, uh, the language that you need, and then you have to take specific types of courses, um, depending on what, your, what area or sector you're interested in. Um, and then that group of, that cohort gets together every so often to talk about um, what else they need to do to get ready for the Peace Corps prep. I mean, and you can look it up on our website. We do have, if you looked up under Peace Corps prep on Eckerd's website, you can read all about it. Great, thanks so much. Someone asked if we um, super score the ACT or SAT. Yes, we absolutely do. Someone else wanted to know if they've already taken the ACT, should they, um, submit those or hold back and be test optional, I would really encourage you to speak with your counselor. So for any of these follow-up questions, you can always reach any of um, our counseling staff, uh, admission counseling staff at eckerd.edu slash counselors. I think that's all the time we have. So I wanna thank you, Alex. Thank you, Dean Sanfilippo. And certainly thank you, Grayson, for uh, joining us today. And thank you to all of you um, for joining us also. Um, depending on your time zone, it could be a Saturday afternoon or a Saturday morning. So we really, really appreciate it. Take care. And, and thank you so much to the Ecker team for spending your morning slash afternoon uh, with the student audience and sharing all this valuable information. So for those who are online, uh, when you exit the Zoom webinar, you will be taken to a quick survey. It's only four questions, so we hope to hear your feedback regarding this particular session. And as I mentioned in the beginning, all of these sessions are recorded and posted to our website shortly after the session concludes. And there are more sessions um, featured with colleges that change lives through Tuesday evening. So we hope to see you um, sign up for more and continue to get connected with colleges and universities across the nation. So hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. And once again, thank you so much to the Ecker team. Have a great day.